Well, hey there, welcome back YouTube. Uh, welcome back to the playground. Thanks for stopping by. Um, so, so far on the last build, we got the chassis and drivetrain all put together. Um, so everything is connected up and been tested and seems to be working fine. Um, since last video, I did make some custom aluminum risers to add the speaker up front to take the speaker out of the cab because I noticed in the instructions that basically it's a giant speaker box in the cab. And I've seen this done a couple different ways and this should be covered up by the hood and you'll never see it and it'll leave more room for an interior. Um, the other thing we did is I got the Flysky FSI6 and from um, Hobby Concepts I ordered the um, self-centering kit. I'll put a link down in the description for that as well as Bob's video for how to actually do that to this radio. So in the kit, there are, you know, a handful of pieces, maybe five or six different pieces, a couple pins and a rocker and some stuff. Uh, his video is really easy to follow along with and goes through it step by step. Um, that spring, you're going to have fun with that spring. Um, it took seven or eight attempts to actually get that little spring connected in the radio, but uh, I got that in. Um, I actually went through Bob's instructions on setting up the radio with the proper throws and everything because I'm going to set it up like he does in his videos. Um, so I wanted to get that all done, so I did that last night um, while I was in, inside in front of the computer. So I got this all set up and ready to go, hopefully. So now we can turn our attention to start the next steps, which looks like installing some of the chrome parts, as well as starting to put in lights and stuff in the bumpers and, you know, parts as we're putting them on, and also some stickers as we're putting them on, because it looks like some of them are going to be really hard to put on later down the road. So... I'm going to start going through the next steps and I'll come back once um, I kind of have something that looks a little bit more like a truck than this does. So, see you in a minute. Alright guys, I'm back and just as an update, I've had to bring up a table to put beside the workbench because I've got so much stuff on the workbench because you're jumping from here to here to here to here and there's hardware and bar parts trees and wiring and everything everywhere. <laughs> Anywhere you go to do this, have plenty of space. But, but we have made progress. Um, we've got the side steps on, the multifunction control box installed. Um, don't do what I did and, you know, put the thing together um, because it does take double-sided tape to put it together and forget to put the wire in. Um, you can get it in afterwards, believe me, I know. <laughs> um, but that was one thing. We got the fuel tanks put together and assembled. I still need to put the caps on them. Um, we got the uh, unlock lever and the fifth wheel all put together and the switch is wired in there for the uh, switch that operates the sound of you know the lock and unlock. Um, I will probably get a servo to do the electronic unlock and lock, lock and put that on a separate switch on the radio probably um, just to get rid of this you know manual thing and I kind of want to plate the back of this but I'm getting ahead of myself but it is cool if you're going to paint it the, the stock blue, they give you blue stickers to put over the top of the tank rails to kind of break it up, plus, you know, match the color of the truck. That's kind of cool. Um, so next, uh, looks like a lot of wiring. Um, I did start on the bumper. So we've got the, the back bumper wired up, LEDs in. Now, this is where it began to get a little confusing in the manual, because in the manual, it shows all three of these... Um, holes having LEDs and that is not the case. The MFC unit comes with one wire and fills up an LED in that center hole. And then the same thing down here, we have um, four on each side, but you only get three lens or three lights to go in there. The other one's just going to be a dead lens for right now. Eventually, you know, I'll probably solder in some extra wires and insert this. It shouldn't be too bad, but right now I don't have any of the, the little LEDs and I'm not going to delay, you know, putting the rest of the truck together that long to order them. That's kind of how this ended up happening. I could have ordered this from Bob's uh, Hobby Concept site. I just, I, it took me an hour to make it versus, you know, four or five days to wait for it. And I don't want to wait. When I got the kit, you know, I kind of organized everything and all the body and fenders and interior and driver were all cast in white plastic. 
And I knew I was going to need those down the road because, you know, I wasn't painting anything right away. I wanted to start working on the truck, get the truck going because, you know, I knew how much time it was going to take to put all this together. So I set all that stuff aside. And then I got to the bumper step. And these back covers, hmm, I came to find out they're on those white parts trees because I was tearing up everything I had on the bench, everything in the MFC box, looking for parts tree H. And I'm like, there is no H! And then it dawned on me, oh, maybe there is, hold on. And I went and checked, and sure enough, they're cast in white. I've put it together, I will be coming back and painting these black. I'm a little disappointed that they're not chrome. Um, it, it, I think it would have just been better to have these cast in chrome. And as many extra chrome bits as I have here, it's kind of sad that I'm going to have a lot of extra chrome stuff, and this wasn't. But, you know, I'm not going to complain. It, it, if this is the biggest inconvenience and annoyance of the kit so far... It's still an awesome kit, and I'm enjoying the hell out of building it. But anyway, wiring this thing up um, is a bit of a challenge. Um, if you're used to wiring stuff up, probably no big deal. Um, I'm not really used to putting light kits in my vehicles, so dealing with these kind of crimped up, wadded up wires, and then you know getting three this way, three this way, and putting caps on, it was like hurting cats. Um, <laughs> but a little bit of patience, and you know getting everything laid out and Having all of your parts and pieces and screws ready to go, that way you can get this on and start screwing it down, makes a big difference. So just be prepared. This step right here takes a while. Um, this fifth wheel, actually there is there is a lot of parts in this little fifth wheel. I was kind of surprised. You've got a switch, you've got a switch activator, you've got a release lever, um, you've got the pivot mechanism. There's a lot of little bits and pieces inside of just this little fifth wheel. So um, take your time with that. There's a couple springs in there. Um, one is really easy to get in. One, you kind of have to get in and put another piece on top of it and pull it back. Just take a little tiny screwdriver, pull that spring back and press that um, piece down. You're good to go there. But, you know, I am still enjoying um, building this truck. I'm having a blast. And I'm sorry I'm not coming back more often and showing you kind of like after each individual step. But... You know how it goes. You're building, and you're just like, okay, that step's done. What's next? And you just start going from one to the other. So um, I'm going to keep working for a little bit longer, and as soon as I have another update for you, I'll be right back. All right, guys. We've got a little bit more done, and I think we'll call it it for tonight. Um, lots of tedious little tasks um, going on this evening, and I've got some other stuff i got to get done. So this is going to be about where we're going to leave it off tonight. And so we've got the start of the interior up front. And we've got the rear deck on with the battery tray. We've got the rumble motor and the MFC installed on top of that. And got the wires from up front run up through. And we'll have to keep routing and figuring out wires as we go. Uh, but I got all the ones up front kind of run up through underneath the floorboard and coming out in between. So, you know, next is got to get the front bumpers on. Uh, I mean, the, the back bumper on. I got to get this painted and get that put on. Uh, start fishing all those wires from the back to the front and then putting those in a loom so I've got to, you know, get all the spaghetti to go that way. <laughs> I just don't have any night and I got stuff, other stuff I got to get done. So that's where we're going to leave it. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, you'll be back in half a second. So see you in a second. Well, hey guys, welcome back. Um, so we've got a little bit more work done on the truck. So we've got the MNC installed. We've got the radio system installed, so receivers in, plugged in, um, hooked up the servos, and have tested everything to make sure, you know, left is left, right is right, forward, back, and all that good stuff. Um, we've started running the wires from the rear bumper up to the front in some wire loom. Um, the kit does come with some wire loom, but it's like two fairly short pieces. Um, you can pick this stuff up on Amazon, super, super cheap. Um, I'll put a link down below if I can remember, but I think this was um, six mil uh, wire loom, and it, it works perfectly for this this group of wires uh, running from the back to the front. Um, right now, this kind of looks like Medusa. It's got stuff going everywhere, um, but we've tested it. Everything works, so at this point, build-wise, truck is done. Um, we just have to do all the remainder of the wiring and everything else is gonna be cosmetic. So I've gotta start working on painting the body. I've gotta work on start painting the interior and the bucket of driver bits. Um, we've gotta paint, you know, the little uh, rubber pipes coming off of the air cleaners and stuff. Um, so I have a bunch of 
painting to do. So for now, um, I think we're just going to wrap this one up. And then once I get everything painted, because it's going to take a few days to get all that stuff painted, because i got to paint, prime it, paint it, sand it. Um, I do want to show you one thing. If you really are going to put a good, good paint job on here, it's one thing you really need to do. So first thing I've done is paint the inside of the whole body black. Um, obviously, you know, most truck interiors aren't going to be white and the fenders and all aren't going to be white. So I just blasted this with just regular um, plastic appropriate spray paint. And, um, but, and never mind all the overspray, all that's going to get sanded off. But I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but around the roof, line, the cab line and the roof line of the cab of the actual truck and right down the front edges of the hood, there's some old lines that run around there. And if you don't sand those down or you can take the back edge of a hobby knife and kind of file them down. But if you don't remove those and you put a really gloss paint job on it, they're going to stick out. You're going to see those little ridges. Um, the other thing is if you start, um, if you put a nice coat of paint on here and you start kind of wet sanding it, you may sand through that and leave a white line. And now you're back to putting a whole nother coat on there to cover that up. So I'm going to knock all these off before I paint the exterior. And that'll save me some time later on trying to, you know, sand out those pieces. So I cut the um, aerial mount for the antenna tube to stick out of it. So this receiver, the antenna is not going to come through the roof. So um, we're just going to take this, file it down, patch it with some um, plastic or filler, and sand that smooth as well. So that's so that'll leave the top of the sleeper, you know, silky smooth. So that's what we're going for. Um, but what I'll do is I'm letting this dry overnight, and then I will tape off the interior part of this. That way I can worry about just focusing on the outside and getting the outside really, really nice and finished. And then I can just peel off the tape off the inside and you know, it's already been back sprayed with the black. So it'll, it'll look and uh, you won't be able, it'll all look like shadow in there. It won't look like white plastic in the corners and stuff. But we do have it um, hooked up so I can turn the radio on and hush the radio up, and then we can turn the truck on. And we've got sound. Once we get it all finished, and we get up close shots, you guys will actually be able to see how much this thing shakes. That little rumble motor in there, I mean, no wonder they give you the Loctite and tell you to Loctite everything and it goes metal to metal because that little rumble motor is gonna shake everything. So my overall plan, um, if I plan on doing a lot of driving with it, so if I'm downstairs practicing or whatever, backing up trailers and stuff, or actually taking it out and doing a lot of driving with it, I'll probably have this on a switch um, just basically cut this wire and put one thing on a switch and just have a little micro switch underneath or something just to cut that off so it's not constantly vibrating the truck and just leave that vibration, you know, when you're showing friends or, or you know, taking video or something. Whoops. Turn the radio off. It beeps at you. Um, but yeah, I think that's one thing I want to do is put a switch on the, the rumble motor to be able to turn that on and off um, and not shake the truck all the time. Uh, but in Bob's video, when he does the speaker up front, he talked about encapsulating this all the way around and he said it makes it have a better sound. And when he said it, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but you can actually just wrap your hand around here and it really changes the sound. It, it adds a, a good bit of depth and a lot of bass or a lot more bass to the sound of this little thing. So I will be filling in around this with some heavy cardstock or some styrene or something to uh, encapsulate those three sides. So the sound kind of drives down and gives a little bit better sound. But anyway, guys, I'm having a blast with this. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, I mean, I know I'm not showing a lot of hands on building. Um, it's just, there's so much to do. Like, you know, you get into one step and boom, you're, you're done with that step. Uh, like assembling 
these and like the little mirrors and stuff didn't take any time at all. But you know, you think doing the rear bumper would be a quick step. That rear bumper took you know ten times longer than anything than any of that stuff did. So it's it's really hard to gauge what to show you guys. So I think for this video series, we're just gonna keep stepping in and taking a look at it as we go. So I hope you guys are, are, are enjoying it. Um, if you are, you know, hit that like button down on the bottom. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. I've got some cool things coming up you don't want to miss. Um, so yeah, stay subscribed so you see my videos when they come up. Um, but again, thanks everybody for watching. Everybody out there, be happy, be safe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.